Good afternoon. Again, my name is Alan Mitchell, and I'm joined here with Michelle Swink. We've got some great opportunities to understand a little bit more about our local ballot initiatives. Michelle, I've got to ask you, what is Dayspring, and why should we care about this ballot initiative? Well, first, thank you for letting me come and speak with everybody from the North End. Um, what is Dayspring? Well, Dayspring is the Richland County home. We exist to serve those residents of Bridgeland County that cannot live independently and need assistance in meeting their ADLs, which are activities of daily living, their laundry, meals, housekeeping, and of course, we help them with their medication. And why should you care? Well, one, if you care anything about history, you've been around a long, long time, and we are part of the fabric of Bridgeland County. If you're not too big into history, you should care because we are a place for people to go so they don't fall through the cracks. And you may never know when you may need us. So that's why you ought to care. Awesome. Okay. Now, I heard that Dayspring was approved as a veterans assistance home. What percentage of residents are veterans? Well, actually, we have over 21 veterans that represent all the branches of service. So our percentage right now is 43%. Impressive. What's the difference between like a licensed and unlicensed facility like yours? Well, a licensed facility is overseen by the Ohio Department of Health and has specific guidelines they must follow. Dayspring is not a licensed facility as we cannot meet certain guidelines. For example, one guideline is the building must have a bathroom for every two residents. Our building was built before these rules existed and in order to meet just this one guideline, we would need to add over 20 bathrooms, which would mean getting rid of over 20 bedrooms. So it just isn't cost effective for us to try to become a licensed facility. Another important part of being an unlicensed facility is that we do not qualify to bill Medicare or Medicaid for our services. Oh, wow. So can you tell us a story or two about the residents? How does one come to live at Dayspring and what's life like for the residents there? Well, let me see here. Uh, one of our residents had lived in Shelby all of his life with his parents. He was born developmentally delayed and they took care of him until they both passed away. Um, and at this point, he began living in a homeless shelter. Um, I happened to be at a bridal shower and started talking to one of his family members. Just by accident, she happened to sit at the same table as me. Well, long story short, he moved in. We filed to get his state disability. He now has a part-time job as a dishwasher. He loves to play video games when he's not working, and he also loves to ride his bike around the property. So that's just one person with his own little unique story. Um, in this case, our resident found us by a bit of luck, and honestly by accident. Others learn about us from caseworkers or concerned neighbors and friends. Does Dayspring have any former North End residents? Um, actually, we do. 29% are from or have lived in the North End. That's impressive. So how long has Daysp Dayspring been serving residents of Richland County? Well, back in the early 1800s, the Ohio State Legislature decreed that each of its 88 counties needed a place for their homeless to go. Richland County built its first home in 1845, and we were a working farm at the time. Each resident had a job here, whether it be working the farm, feeding chickens, slaughtering cows, or working in the house cooking and doing laundry. The thought was if the county was providing you a place to sleep and food to eat, you were required to do your share. If you didn't, your plate was turned over and you were not fed. As years went on, the concept of the working farm fell away as they were losing money rather than earning a profit. Things had changed. More and more residents had become disabled and needed more care. They could not perform the work they once had. In the 1980s, our county decided to name us Dayspring and turn us into an assisted living for those with limited income that can no longer live on their own. Today, all of our residents are disabled in some way, physically, mentally, or both. Wow, it sounds like the service model has changed quite a bit. Now, can residents from other counties come to Dayspring? How does that work? Uh, no. One of our requirements is that you must be from here or live here. You must have a connection with Richland County. That being said, we have been asked to temporarily house a homeless veteran who is not from our county. We have done that. Nobody uh, ever wants to have a homeless vet. Um, I've actually been asked by people from other counties like Crawford, Ashen, pretty much you name them. Um, if they can move to Dayspring, and the answer is, I'm sorry, but no, we are only for Richland County. What a great service to have for the community. Now, how is Dayspring funded? 
What kind of donations do you accept? Well, our operating fund is mostly composed of the levy and the residence board and care. Day Springs tax levy is on the ballot every five years. The current levy is 0.8 mills and will expire at the end of 2023. It costs a property owner of $100,000, excuse me, of a $100,000 home less than $28 a year. Our residents also pay what they can. For example, if a resident made $1,000 from their Social Security a month, they receive $40 in spending money, their doctor's appointments and prescription co-pays are paid next, and Dayspring receives what is left for board and care. The tax levy then subsidizes the residents for their stay. As for the donations, we accept all kinds of things. Dayspring is a big house and needs all the things your house needs. Towels, bed sheets, batteries for remote controls, toothpaste, shampoo, razors. Sometimes we receive a monetary donation asking us to do something for the whole house. Depending upon the amount we receive, we have bought picnic tables, rocking chairs. Actually, just uh, just last Friday on St. Patrick's Day, we got everybody a shamrock shake. All right. They were, uh, they were pretty stoked. <laughs> Is 0.8 mils enough? Yes, um, even though it's a, compared to others, it's a small levy, uh, it means the world to us. We are asking for our renewal because our current level of funding is meeting our needs. We focus on what we need, and if we have a bit of extra money, then we look at wants. So what would happen to Dayspring if this ballot initiative were to fail? What would happen to the resident? The levy gives us over 71% of our funding. If we were to fail, then we would be forced to close. We simply can't exist without the levy. As for the residents, they would all need to find a new place to live, which would be hard. Many do not meet the level of care of a nursing home and are too young or can't afford other assisted livings. All 21 veterans would have a tough time as well, as they would all need to find an approved veteran home. Many would need to move out of Russian County to find somewhere, and even then, there's usually a waiting list. Michelle, I don't know. Did I forget to ask you anything that you feel like is important? I think I forgot to answer a question. I didn't finish answering a question. Let me see here. Um, you asked what they do during the day. Yes. I didn't answer that. Okay. Each resident is different, and they do what they enjoy. Some go to work. Others play cards and games. Others like to spend time outside. Some days they stay in watching TV. Our activity coordinator plans trips to fast food restaurants, crafting places, swimming. They even went to a monster truck show last year. We eat all of our meals together in our dining room. Those that need medicine will spend some time with our nurses. I personally enjoy when they do a scavenger hunt in the building. So each day is a little bit different depending on what they want to do. I feel that much more educated about Day Spring and this ballot initiative. I thank you very much for coming and talking to us and hopefully we can be more informed citizens as a result. Thank you very much, Michelle, for joining us. Thank you very much. Actually, I thought of one thing that I would like to say, if that's okay. Oh, please continue. If anybody is interested in coming out to Dayspring to see us, please give me a call and I will give you a tour. Sometimes you just need to see to believe. Thank you. All right. <laughs>